Hello everyone. This story is about, what if Naruto and Hinata married early? Hope you like it. Let's start. Naruto awoke the next morning, chuckling as he thought of the announcement the day before. He and Hinata were engaged, and now there was nothing anyone could do about it. He couldn't help wondering what he had done to deserve this, but he didn't really care. He got up, showered, dressed, all the normal morning stuff, and was about to walk out his door when there was a knock at the door. He jumped, surprised, then opened the door. Standing there was a very distraught Hinata. He immediately stepped back so she could come in, which she did. What's wrong, Hinata, he asked her. He could tell this was something serious, and naturally, he was concerned. Naruto. She came over and wrapped her arms around him, crying on his chest. He put his arms around her awkwardly, truly afraid now. What in the world could have happened to Hinata to have her here, crying, this early in the morning? It couldn't be Niji, or her father, so what in the world had happened? While he was thinking this, he just held her and let her cry, not sure what to say or do. While holding her, he made a shadow clone. It shut the door so they could have privacy, then set about doing a few chores, picking up, cutting some fruit for Hinata's breakfast, things like that. Once it was done, it dispelled itself. After several minutes, Hinata calmed down, and Naruto turned her to the table where some fruit and a cinnamon roll was sitting. She sat down and ate, slowly, shaking a little. Naruto was always there, never getting out of her arm's reach. He made her some calming tea, and she drank it slowly, carefully, so she didn't burn herself. Naruto waited patiently. He was burning with curiosity, but he knew she'd tell him when she was ready, so he waited. Hinata watched the boy she loved, had loved for so long, knowing he must be curious as to what was going on, but she smiled as he waited. He was just there for her, and that was enough. As she ate and drank her tea, she felt herself calming down somewhat. By the time the fruit and pastry were eaten and the tea consumed as well, she was almost herself again. And still he said nothing, just sat there, watching her, waiting for her to speak. She knew this would happen eventually, she just hadn't thought it would happen yet. Damn it. Just when everything was so good, why did it all have to be ruined now? She knew after she showed Naruto this, she would lose him. She just knew it. Naruto saw Hinata was getting ready to cry again, so he took her hand. She looked at him, and he said, Hinata, I'm here. You can tell me. What's happened? What's going on? She was using a transformation at the moment, so she released it. That's when Naruto saw the first indication that something wasn't right. A large nasty bruise colored Hinata's face beside her eye. It stretched from her temple, down her cheek, to her jawline. On the other side, there was a bruise going from her temple up to her forehead. Her jaw looked like it had been abused as well, and though it wasn't bruised, it was obvious she moved it with considerable pain. Naruto was glad he had given her soft foods. Her neck had what looked like finger marks on it, also bruises, like she had been strangled, or someone had attempted to anyway. Naruto looked at her in shock, taking all this in. Her hands were also hurt, though not as bad. It looked like she had fought someone off and taken a few small wounds on her hands in the process. Hinata saw the look in Naruto's eyes. He was shocked. She knew that would be the case, but she wasn't even showing him half of it yet. She knew, when he saw everything, he'd see how weak she really was, and she would lose him. She wouldn't even blame him, so she had already found out how to undo the blood oath, and was going to release him so he could live and find happiness without her. Hinata stood and took her coat off, hanging it on the door, and Naruto saw her arms were bruised as well. Not as badly as some other areas, but they were. Then she peeled out of her shirt and he could see that all around her waist she was bruised badly. She put her top back on, then rolled up her pant legs so he could see her bruised legs. She made the expression about feeling like one big bruise, pretty damn literally true. The only parts of her body that weren't bruised or injured were her feet. Naruto's shock was growing with everything Hinata did. What in the world had happened to her? That was his first thought. His second thought was, who did this to her? Hinata watched him closely and saw his worry and his anger. She mistook the anger as being directed at her for being weak and she started to cry again. Just as she started to sob, he took her in his arms and kissed her gently, carefully, not wanting to hurt her any more than she was already. Hinata pulled back and looked at him. In his eyes were anger, worry, but mostly love. 
She sighed. She had been wrong. She'd never been so happy to be proven wrong before. She pulled Naruto to her and hugged him as tight as she could in spite of her bruises. The pain didn't matter, she was in his arms. She sighed and cuddled closer to him. She felt his hands running through her hair and she whimpered in pleasure. Naruto rocked her slightly, holding her close, running his fingers through her hair, careful not to touch her anywhere where she was bruised, not wanting to cause her pain at all. She seemed to be calming down, just having him hold her, so that's what he kept doing. He just held her and waited for her to calm down. It took her a while, but she eventually did calm down. She pulled back and looked up at him, and both realized that through this whole event, neither of them had spoken a word. Hinata, what happened? Naruto broke the silence, somewhat reluctantly. He wanted, no, he needed to know what had happened to his precious person, but the silence was comfortable. Hinata looked down. I was too weak, Naruto. I was so sure you would leave me when you saw this, but I needed to show you. I was too weak to defend myself. She looked up at Naruto, who just smiled comfortingly, waiting for her to continue. Half an hour earlier, Hyuga compound. Hinata was already up and dressed and ready to leave for her day when it happened. She was on her way down the stairs, to head out the front door, when she heard a cold, sarcastic voice. Lady Hinata, it said. She turned and saw a member of the branch family looking at her with a cold look in his brown eyes. Brown eyes? Oh, right, she'd heard of this man, he didn't inherit the Byakugan from his father, for some reason. It seems my chance has come, he said. The next thing Hinata knew, she was at the bottom of the stairs, bruised as she was when Naruto saw her. The branch member had grabbed her by the throat, lifting her off her feet, and threw her into a wall, bruising her back pretty badly. He threw her down the stairs, and during her fall, she hit her legs, head, face, and arms on the stairs. Her hands got hurt when she tried to grab the stairs, and they got dragged along the hardwood instead. The man watched her for a few moments, during which she didn't move, then he stalked off, probably believing she was dead. When she was sure he was gone, Hinata rose, whimpering in pain. She put up a transformation, so she would look normal, then ran as fast as she could to Naruto's. That's how she came to be there so early. At Naruto's. Hinata slowly, hesitantly, told Naruto what had happened. Naruto comforted her, holding her close and running his fingers through her hair, a gesture that seemed to calm them both a good deal, as she told her story. His rage was boiling, but he kept it in check. For Hinata, she was thinking of everything the two of them had already been through together. First her cheering him on, then her finding out about the fox, and now this. He had stuck with her throughout it all, and now he was showing that he wasn't going to leave her for being weak either. She backed away from him slowly, wishing she didn't have to, then went and sat down on his sofa, to relieve the pain in her legs. Naruto followed and sat with her, taking her hands in his gently, needing the physical contact. She smiled, she craved it as well. After sitting there and holding hands for some time, the two of them were calmed by one another's presence somewhat, and Naruto finally asked Hinata, now what? Hinata looked surprised. She hadn't thought of that. She didn't feel safe at home anymore. She looked at him, thinking. Here she was, sitting with Naruto at barely nine in the morning. He had opened his door to her, given her food, listened to her, held her, and when she showed him the bruises, he was shocked, but he accepted her nonetheless. And she had seen the rage in his eyes. She now realized that his rage was directed at the one who had hurt her, not her herself. She suddenly realized she had been thinking for a couple minutes and hadn't answered his question. I, I don't know, Naruto. He waited. I don't really feel safe at home. No one would believe me, they'd just say I must have fallen from tripping or something. And I know when he finds out that I'm still alive, he'll try something again if I go back. But I don't know what to do. Well, for tonight, you can stay here. We'll figure things out after that. Oh, crud. He made a shadow clone and sent it out the door. What was that for? She asked, curious. I sent that one to get Jiraiya. He's our teacher, after all. She nodded, realizing he had a good idea. And you're not going to be up for training today, so Jiraiya and I will stay here with you. Tonight you'll stay here, and we'll figure things out between now and tomorrow morning. Hinata was surprised. Naruto was this willing to help her? Why? What in the world had she done to earn this loyalty? 
She didn't know, but she was glad she had it. Naruto still had his arms around her and was smiling at her gently as they talked and waited. They were both so involved in their own thoughts, neither was really paying attention to the conversation. To prove my point, Hinata commented at one point, I don't know what I'd do without you. Naruto's response was, I don't see why you'd ever go out without your shoes. To which Hinata answered, never missing a beat, I'd go out with you anywhere Naruto. Such is the result of being too absorbed in one's own thoughts, to really pay attention to the conversation one is involved in. In any case, it wasn't long before a very worried Jiraiya opened Naruto's front door. What in the world is going on here, he asked upon finding Naruto and Hinata wrapped in one another's arms. He came around in front of them, saw Hinata's bruised face and Naruto's worried look, and sat down in one of Naruto's chairs hard. It took Naruto about ten minutes to fill Jiraiya in on what had happened to Hinata and how she had told him about it and so on. The only part he left out was about Hinata taking her shirt off. He didn't need Jiraiya getting a nosebleed just now. Jiraiya listened attentively to what Naruto was telling him, nodding a few times, stopping him with a couple questions here and there, but mostly just listening. Naruto, while surprised, was glad the pervert could take things seriously if necessary. He didn't even look at Hinata in an inappropriate way even once the whole time, which for Jiraiya was a major milestone. Naruto held Hinata possessively as he talked to the sage. Jiraiya told them to take the day off, and told Naruto to take care of Hinata. He told them both that he'd make sure to let Hayashi know where Hinata was and what had happened, then he left. Hinata turned to Naruto, are you sure I can stay here tonight? Naruto nodded. And you can have the bed, I'll stay out here. I'll be right here if you need me. And if anything is wrong, don't hesitate to yell for me, all right? She nodded. Naruto spent the rest of the next day pampering Hinata, comforting her when she was in pain, making her lunch and then supper, eating with her, holding her when she was scared or sad. Doing everything he could to make sure she was okay. Hinata appreciated this more than she could say, and she was surprised to find Naruto so willing to do it, yet she was happy with him. Naruto eventually carried her to his bed and laid her down on it. It wasn't the most comfortable one ever, but to Hinata it was better even than her oh so soft mattress at the Hyuga compound. Odd, she thought, that she didn't think of that place as home anymore. After all, after what she had gone through there, who would call it home? After Hinata fell asleep that night, Jiraiya came back and sat Naruto down. They had some things to discuss. Naruto, tell me, how much does this girl mean to you? I love her. She's my fiancé, and she's the only one to ever really accept me, other than you. I want her to be happy more than anything. Why? I spoke to her father, Lord Hayashi, and he felt that he would be unable to guarantee Hinata's safety in the Hyuga compound after the events of this morning. He said I should warn you that he may have to remove her from there for her safety. Naruto almost volunteered to have her stay there, but he decided to wait until it came to be, if it did. Time would tell on that one, he knew, so he'd wait and see what happened. It felt good to have her there in his home with him, though, and he was glad to know she was safe, for tonight at least. After Jiraiya left, Naruto went into the bedroom and watched over Hinata as she slept. She was so peaceful, so beautiful in her sleep. He didn't touch her, he just watched her sleep. As he watched her, he renewed his determination to protect her and to make sure no one ever hurt her well, never again, anyway. He was still angry at the man who had hurt her, but he wouldn't do anything about it unless she asked him to do something, which he rather doubted she would. Naruto checked the time. It was two in the morning. He slipped out of the room, leaving Hinata asleep, and laid on the futon and fell asleep himself. He and Hinata each dreamed of the other. They were peaceful, sweet dreams that both needed after this stressful day. And Naruto, she whispered, barely able to keep herself from whimpering. She wanted him there desperately, but she didn't want to bother him if he was asleep. Naruto heard her voice. He had been barely asleep, but the moment he heard her, he was wide awake. All she had said was his name, but that was enough. He got up, and moments later, he was there beside her, his crystal clear blue eyes looking into her pearly ones. She looked scared. What's wrong, Hinaheim? He reached out and took her in his arms and pulled her to him gently, hugging her and holding her in his arms. He felt her arms go around him, which elicited a slight groan from him, but he just held her, comforting her. I had a bad dream, Naruto. I'm sorry for bothering you. He smiled at her to let her know it was fine, and she told him about her dream. I'm sorry, Hinaheim, he said, truly feeling bad for her. I'm here. 
I won't hurt you. I love you, Hinata, now, and always. Hinata smiled at his declaration and snuggled into him, her arms wrapped around him tightly. Then she thought of something. Will you stay with me, Naruto? Naruto looked at her in surprise. I would never leave you, Hinata. Why would you ask that? I mean, we are engaged, after all. I would never hurt you like that. She smiled at his naivete and shook her head. No, Naruto, I mean right now. Will you stay here, in bed, with me, tonight? Naruto gasped. He hadn't thought of that. But he also knew he would never dare deny Hinata anything. He smiled. I'll stay with you, Hinata. Now and always. I promise. He held her close and they laid down together. Naruto inconspicuously made a shadow clone and had it lay down on his futon. She cuddled close to him and Naruto groaned as his body reacted to her. He held her close, careful not to let her feel that. He couldn't believe he was turning into a damn pervert then he thought again and realized he wasn't. He was just having a natural reaction to the proximity of a beautiful woman. He grinned at that thought. Hinata truly was beautiful. And she was his. He smiled wider, then held her close and both drifted to sleep, comfortable and comforted in one another's arms. Five hours later. Naruto heard a knock on his balcony door. Jiraiya. No one else would do that. He did a quick substitution with his clone, giving the clone who now held Hinata a glare to not dare to do anything to her. A few moments later, the clone carefully slid out of bed without waking her and dispelled. Naruto laughed at the clone's nervousness, then opened the balcony door, letting Jiraiya enter his apartment. Jiraiya saw that Naruto looked somewhat disheveled but decided this wasn't the time to embarrass his student. He was, after all, here on business. Good morning, Naruto. Naruto looked at him, tiredly, his eyes drooping somewhat. Good morning, Sensei. What can I do for you? He knew Jiraiya noticed how he looked, but was glad the old pervert didn't press the issue. I doubt you can do much of anything for me, Naruto. I'm here on business, and by the way, you and Hinata are going to take the next few days off from training until we get this situation all figured out. Naruto nodded, reluctant to lose the time. But knowing he had to take care of Hinata first. I spoke to Hayashi and told him of Hinata's injuries and such. As I expected, he told me there was no way they could do much to the attacker. There was no proof after all. And there would be even less now. But he did say he understands that she must be removed from the Hubic compound, at least until the attacker has been dealt with. So, what happened with you? Naruto gave Jiraiya an odd look, then saw the perverted grin he was getting and the slight drip of blood coming from his nose. Pervy Sage, he yelled. We didn't do anything, you jerk. And we have no intention of doing anything anytime soon. Little did Naruto know, Hinata was dreaming of just that in the next room, which is why she didn't wake up when he yelled. Jiraiya grinned at Naruto, who slowly smiled back, then continued. Look, we didn't do anything, but I won't deny I feel better having her here. As long as she's here, I know she's safe and I can protect her if something happens, so I won't deny I like that. But seriously, I would never dishonor her like that. Jiraiya smiled at Naruto's reaction, laughing at his reaction to the nosebleed, and then beaming proudly at his assertion to protect Hinata and her honor. He came over and hugged Naruto after he was done talking. Naruto, surprised, slowly hugged back. Jiraiya said, I'm proud of you, kid. Your dad would be, too. Naruto blushed a little, then smiled at the sage. Thanks, Jiraiya-sensei. You may be an old pervert, but you're precious to me. You're the only connection I have to my father, and you're one of the only three people in my life who actually accept me. I have two in my home right now, and the third. Jiraiya smiled at Naruto's play on words. My life was such a wreck before, and now I have a sensei who cares for me, a fiancé who just happens to be the most beautiful girl I've ever met, and everyone knows who my father is, including me. You've done so much for me, sensei. Thank you. Jiraiya smiled, tears in his eyes. He hadn't exactly expected Naruto to open up to him like that, but he was glad the kid had. After all, he owed it to Minato to take care of his son. He smiled, thinking of Minato. I meant what I said, kid. Your father would be proud of you. You're quite a kid. Naruto smiled, blushing slightly at the praise. Oh, Jiraiya, about Hinata. 
Naruto trailed off, not sure what to say. It's all right, Naruto, you can tell me. Jiraiya knew the kid had something in mind. All right. If she has to leave her family home I want to talk to her about this, but if she's willing, and if her father is okay with it I'd like to have her here. Jiraiya thought a moment, sweat dropped, then burst out laughing. After a few moments, he was rolling on the floor laughing, tears running from his eyes from laughing so hard. Naruto didn't know what was so damn funny. Okay, sensei, calm down. Jiraiya finally stopped laughing, gasping for air. Okay, now, what the hell is so damn funny? I was just thinking of when your father first met your mother. She had been wounded in a battle, and he immediately offered her his tent and sleeping bag, fed her, helped her wash, and basically saved her life. The whole idea of you sheltering Hinata like that made me think of those two. I slash N, I made this up. I don't know anything about Minato and Kushina's meeting. I just thought this would make an impact on Naruto. Naruto thought about it a moment, then chuckled, so you're saying that what I'm doing for Hinata is like what my dad did for my mom. Jiraiya nodded. Good. So, dad really would be proud of me. Naruto smiled, thinking on that. Jiraiya nodded again. Told you so kid. Your father was a great man, and you're just like him. He would be very proud. Naruto blushed. After that, Naruto got up and got to work making breakfast for him, Jiraiya, and Hinata. He laughed as he made clones to do everything at once, then, once it was all ready, he dispelled them and went into his room to wake up Hinata. He smiled as he realized he wanted to do this himself as opposed to letting one of his clones do it. Bending down, he kissed Hinata on the forehead, smiling at how beautiful she was. He thought a moment, then realized that he wanted her to always be happy. He wanted to make her happy, and spend his life with her. He really did love her. He smiled, then kissed her closed eyes, her cheeks, then her lips. The first few kisses woke her, and she responded eagerly when he kissed her lips. Then she put her arms around his neck, and they kissed deeply and passionately a little bit, then pulled apart, smiling at one another. Naruto whispered, time to wake up, my love. Breakfast is ready. She smiled and got up, and he went back to the other room to wait for her. Naruto sat with Jiraiya, to wait for Hinata. Hinata slowly undressed from her night clothes, and looked at her bruises, which were fading a bit, but she was still sore. She sighed, thinking of everything that had happened, then smiled as she remembered Naruto's reaction to all of this. She smiled, whispering to herself, I love you, Naruto. She got dressed in her typical black mesh shirt, beige pants, and baggy jacket, then went out and found Naruto and Jiraiya talking quietly waiting for her. The three sat down to breakfast. Hinata was surprised a bit that it was so good. She looked at Jiraiya. Did you help with this, sensei? Jiraiya laughed and Naruto blushed. What, you think your fiancé can't cook? Naruto did all this on his own, my dear, and I can tell you he didn't do it for me. Hinata smiled and blushed, then whispered to Naruto, you did this for me? He nodded. Why? Well, you've had a stressful few days, for one thing, and you're my fiancé, and I wanted to make sure you were okay, so I made this all for you. Besides, Hinata, I love you. She blushed like mad, then smiled. I love you, too, Naruto. Jiraiya was scribbling like mad, but Hinata sent a gentle fist strike at the notebook with a tiny bit of fire chakra, causing the pad to burst into flames. Jiraiya looked at her in surprise, and she simply told him, You will not use us, Jiraiya, got me? He nodded slowly, wondering when this girl got claws. This is a special moment for me and Naruto, and I will not have you using it in your perverted books. I'm sorry. Jiraiya smiled at her protectiveness and nodded. They sat and ate together, Naruto and Hinata smiling at one another every once in a while, and Jiraiya chuckling at thoughts of Minato and Kushina, and how similar they were to Naruto and Hinata. After breakfast, the three went to train a little while, since they simply had nothing better to do. That done, they all went to the Hyuga compound and gathered up Hinata's belongings, clothing, and everything else she wanted. They left the room empty of any identifying mark that it was hers, leaving just the furniture, pretty much. Hinata realized what was going on, but she was more than happy to do this. By the time they had brought Hinata's things back to Naruto's apartment, it was lunchtime, so they ate a light lunch, then sat and talked for hours. All three relaxing and getting to know one another more. 
Hinata told Naruto and Jiraiya about growing up in the Hyuga compound, Jiraiya told them both about their parents when they were younger, and Naruto talked about his early years. He kept back what had happened that made him so bitter before finding out about Hinata's feelings and what had made him so willing to move so fast with her, though. Naruto felt somewhat guilty keeping this back, but he knew it wasn't time to tell Hinata in particular yet. He knew he'd have to tell her sooner or later, but now wasn't the time. Soon, he promised himself, he'd tell her soon. After telling stories and talking together, they ate dinner, then Jiraiya finally left the two kids to themselves, telling them he'd see them the next morning and, to Naruto in particular. He said he'd want their answer by then. Naruto nodded, and the sage left, via the balcony door. Naruto turned to Hinata and smiled. Stay here again tonight? She nodded, blushing. I'll even sleep with you, if you want again. She smiled, blushing even deeper, then nodded. He smiled. I'm glad you feel so comfortable with me, Hinaheim. Hinata smiled at him. He really cared for her. She realized, then, that he was willing to do anything she needed to help her, and she was happy. She smiled and put her arms around him and cuddled close to him, sighing, contently. Naruto held her, running his hands through her hair and kissing her head lovingly. She smiled at him and held him close, reveling in how happy she was. Hinata? She looked up at him, slightly worried when she saw he looked nervous. Jiraiya was talking to me about this whole situation with you and your family and such. She nodded. He and I talked about having you move in here with me. She gasped, then nodded for him to continue. I would be more than happy to have you live here with me, Hinata. I love you, and having you here, I'd know that you were safe and that you were taken care of. So, it's up to you really. Do you want to move in here with me? Hinata thought a moment, surprised. He was asking her to move in with him? She thought about her father and the rest of the clan. Her father wouldn't like it, but she knew it was his idea to move her out to begin with, so she knew he'd be all right with this. Then she looked at Naruto. Live with him? That's what she wanted with her life forever, so why not now? She thought a few more moments, almost laughing as she saw how nervous he was. She finally smiled and said, I'd love to move in here with you, Naruto. I love you, and I want to spend the rest of my life with you, so yes, I will move in here with you. Naruto smiled, took her in his arms, and kissed her deeply. She responded eagerly, and each one ran their hands over the other. After a few minutes, they each realized how their bodies were, reacting to one another, and they both backed off, blushing. Naruto smiled, and she smiled back, then they kissed again, softly this time. Naruto smiled at her and whispered, I love you, Hinata. She smiled. Let's get ready for bed, alright? She nodded and got off his lap. You first love. You get your shower, and I'll get stuff out here taken care of, then we can trade off, alright? She nodded and went to shower. Naruto laughed at his reaction to Hinata and hers to him, then he got up and picked up the leftovers from dinner, did the dishes, and dusted a bit, just doing stupid things that needed to be done. He chuckled, thinking how easy this was when using shadow clones. Just as he was done doing his cleaning, he heard the shower turn off and smiled, deciding to pull a prank on Hinata. Hinata was showering slowly, enjoying the heat and the feel of the water flowing over her body, her muscles relaxing and her bruises feeling less and less painful. She felt so, right here. Her body was relaxed, her heart was content, she just felt right. She grinned at herself as her mind drifted to Naruto's body having been against hers. She felt her body reacting again and she shivered. She laughed at herself and finished washing herself and rinsed off, then turned off the water. She slowly pulled back the shower curtain, smiling, slowly realizing she had just showered at Naruto's house. No. She was moving in, their house now. She smiled. She was so distracted by her thoughts, she didn't even notice right away when the bathroom door opened. Then she turned and looked, and there he was, staring at her. Naruto had planned on bursting in, finding her still in the shower, and tripping and falling, and accidentally seeing her, but when he came in, there she was, standing in front of the sink. Totally naked, totally involved in her own thoughts. He blushed, but he just couldn't look away. Her body was so perfect. 
Her skin, that alabaster white he had come to find so beautiful, was completely without blemish everywhere and yes, he did see it all. She finally saw him standing there, blushed, then smiled and struck a pose, showing off her curves, to him. He blushed and turned away a little, then looked back at her and whispered, You're so beautiful, Hinata. She blushed, Naruto, you really think so? He nodded. I'm glad you approve. Naruto smiled at her. Of course I approve. She grinned. Your turn. Naruto looked at her, confused. You've seen me, now show me you. Naruto blushed and told her, I am sorry, Hinata, I don't want you to see me right now. He didn't want to tell her he was sporting a massive erection from looking at her. That would be really embarrassing. Why not, Naruto? You saw me, now come on, I want to see you. It's just, my body, I'm reacting to you. She looked at him a moment, then laughed when she realized what he meant. Come on, Naruto, show me. He blushed, then slowly undressed for her. He blushed even redder as he slid his boxers off and his reaction showed. She stared at his body, marveling at the definition of his muscles and the obvious strength in them. Then she saw his erection and blushed, then smiled. She knew that would be hers one day. She couldn't help wanting it now, but she knew the time wasn't right yet. She'd wait. She came over, hugged him, kissed him, and whispered, I love you, Naruto, and one day, everything I see will be mine, just as everything you see will be yours. I promise. Naruto blushed and whispered back, I love you too, Hinata. And I promise you we will be together forever. Then he had an idea. Hinata, would you like to join me in the shower? She blushed a moment, knowing he wasn't thinking anything sexual, then nodded. I just got clean, but I'd love to join you. They climbed in the shower together and both cleaned up, then the two got out. Dressed in their night clothes, and went and laid down together in bed, smiling at one another in the dark, the only light in the room coming in through the window from the full moon outside. Hinata kissed Naruto gently, he responded in kind, and the two laid together and marveled at how peaceful they felt like that. Naruto smiled and asked Hinata, When did you fall for me, Hinata? Hinata gasped. She had been thinking back to those days when they were younger herself. Had he been reading her mind? No, that couldn't be. She looked at him and said, You remember the time you protected a young girl from a bunch of bullies, and then they all turned on you? He nodded. That was me. Really? She nodded. I didn't know that was you, but I guess I've been protecting you all along, huh? She smiled. Yes, Naruto, you have. And you were always my inspiration, but after that, I realized I wanted to know you and be near you. So, I guess when you saved me that day was when I fell for you. Naruto put his arms around her and pulled her closer. She sighed and cuddled with him. I love you so much, Naruto. Thank you. Between that and now, you've done so much for me. He sighed and held her close. I love you too, Hinaheim. And you've done more for me than I could ever do for you. Trust me. She smiled, but she was curious. She looked at him, questioning. I'll tell you soon, my love, I promise. I'm just not ready to tell you just yet. Please, just trust me and wait for me? She sighed, disappointed, but then she nodded. I'll wait, my love. I'm just glad I have you, that's all I need. And whenever you're ready to tell me, I'll be here. Then she snuggled closer to him and closed her eyes. As he ran his fingers through her hair, she reached up and returned the favor, playing with his hair. She smiled, realizing she liked the feel of his surprisingly soft hair. She also slowly realized that he liked her doing that, so she kept doing it, even as he was doing the same to her. She opened her eyes a moment, saw his eyes were closed, then closed hers again and both of them drifted to sleep together, arms around one another, hands tangled in one another's hair. They both had smiles on their faces, and both of them slept deeper and more peacefully that night than they had in years. Jiraiya and Hayashi watched the young lovers from across the street, Hayashi with his Byakugan, then both smiled at one another, nodded, and faded into the night. Satisfied that Naruto and Hinata were going to be good for one another and were going to be happy together. No one saw the two as they silently agreed that the next generation was secure and faded into the darkness of the night. This was all for now. Thank you for watching, I hope you liked it and that you will be back for more. Please like, share and subscribe. See ya!